Hello everybody and welcome to this evening's PB webinar. My name is Amanda Pauley and I am Deputy Editor at PB and tonight we've got a really great session for you with Lizzie Bath um, who is the Spa Director at Ye Old Bell in Nottinghamshire and today she's going to be talking about how to create spa packages that add value instead of discounting um, especially in this kind of COVID-19 world and she's going to cover the common do's and don'ts and she's going to share her top tips for getting it right. Um, I just want to let you all know that this session is pre-recorded however if you do have any questions post them in the chat box on Facebook and we will come back to you with some answers hopefully the next day we'll send anything to Lizzie and get some answers back to you but otherwise Lizzie thank you so much for joining us today really really appreciate it how are you doing I'm good thank you brilliant so Lizzie I'm going to let you take over so if you want to share your screen um, and I'm going to turn my camera and my mic off and you just let me know when you're at the end of your presentation and I will turn it back on and wrap the session up. I've lost my video. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, don't worry. Um, you know, technology, that's how it is. Um, we're all used to it. We've oh, had a few we laughs. laughs. I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> Brilliant. So, yeah. Um, I'll let you start your presentation and yeah, just shout if you need me, but I am um, here, but I'll let you, I'll let you start. Okay. Hello everybody. My name's Lizzie and um, thank you for the introduction. Um, I've been a spa director here at the Ye Old Bell Spa for three years. I was lucky enough to design and build it to my own sort of standard, which is really good when you're sort of creating packages and managed to do everything my own way. One thing that I am so, so passionate about is actually getting creative with packages, adding value, but never giving discounts on my core prices. Because I think once you start going down this discounting track, you end up very much so like undervaluing yourself. And I think it's always hard to come back and bring value back to your packages or your treatments if you've been discounting. When I was very, very first starting at a very young age, when I was doing mobile beauty therapy, I got into that trap of trying to do things cheaply and always kind of struggling to cover my costs with my petrol and everything. So as you grow and as you learn, you really need to look at how you value each and every part of your business. So create packages or treatment bolt-ons that in, add a lot of value instead of discounting all the time. And don't worry about what your competitors are doing because quite often they'll do a, a discount and you go, oh no, I need to do it cheaper to keep my customers. But what I've learned over the years is actually by holding your value, holding your worth, people will appreciate it a lot more. Um, so that's how we did the spa. We designed it so everything has its own value and we make sure that everything that we've done is kind of value orientated. So we have spa access. You may just have a treatment or a salon or even a treatment room, but look at everything that you can offer in your sort of things. So from experiences, from your food and beverage to your wine. Um, I always think wine is a good example of how you people will value a really nice bottle of wine, but you can also be on a budget and have nice cheap pink Prosecco. But actually when you're celebrating or when you give something of value that's worth it, people will pay for it. So always make sure everything that you have has the right value. The other thing you really need to look at when you're designing your packages or your treatments, it's okay giving people great value for money, but if it doesn't cover your costs, you're struggling, you're on a downer altogether. And when you're looking at your costs, you're not just looking at how much it costs you to perform that treatment and what you'd like to take from it. You need to look at everything such as your rent and your rates. If you've got high rent, you know, you're going to have to charge a lot more to just even start covering your costs. If you've got a big team, you've got all your wages to incur and you've got to look sort of allow for people's downtime as well as everything else. Um, obviously utilities and the maintenance. So a lot of our equipment needs a lot of maintenance, which we then have to factor into our costs as a whole. Marketing, big one. Make sure you use marketing wisely, but also don't scrimp on marketing because you need to get your name out there, your branding and everything and make sure it's always consistent. We've spent a lot of time sort of making sure that people know us and that our brand is always quite strong. And the food, you know, depending on what kind of food you're going to be offering, whether it be sandwiches or whether it be sort of five-star dining, bespoke food, 
you know, make sure that you're working your costs out very, very well. I've got a fantastic chef that really can make the most amazing meals with very little wastage and so the food bills come down. Uh, look at your stock, you know, what kind of products are you wanting to sell? What's your retail on them? You know, can your company support you? I mean, I've been working with Jermaine de Cappuccini now since I was a little treatment room in the middle of a hotel and their support for adding the value to treatments has been absolutely incredible. So that's always quite nice is to work with a product house that's really supportive. Um, but, you know, stock is a big cost to your business um, and keeping tight control of that is vital. And then also factor in everything from your cotton wool to your consumables, your stationery, your pens, your pencils, have everything accounted for because that, that way you can actually look at the running costs as a whole of your business and then you can work out what the value of everything is. So, it's really Sorry, it's Amanda here. Um, I can't see your presentation at the moment. Oh. I don't think it's shared on the screen. I just thought I'd let you know. Uh, oh, no. Because all of that was going brilliantly and I didn't want to interrupt you. Four <laughs> <laughs> <Well>, slides. <laughs> <laughs> it was just such a good little um, segment you were doing, so I didn't want to interrupt you. But I don't know if you want to try sharing it now and then we can just pick up from where you are. There. Oh, uh, let me try again. I thought I'd got ah, it. <laughs> no, sorry, you were in such a brilliant flow. I didn't want to stop you. But yeah, maybe if we just move to the slide um, yeah, that you're up to. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting places with packages um, that create value instead of discounts. Um, obviously, when I was talking about the spa, so think about what areas you've got to sort of market value and what people will pay for each element so we've got different experiences we've got the food and beverage and we've also got the wine which i was talking about very very nicely earlier um, when you're looking at things obviously this is where we were looking at talking about your costs and i think it's really 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 important to get your costings right and make sure you've factored everything in because as i said if you don't then you end up not seeing exactly what's going out and then you can't make money if you're giving things away too cheaply. So this is where we were at last time. So we'll just go back on. Sorry about that. So now you can sort of, you've got all your costs, you know what you're literally going to be spending every month. So then you need to work out how many people you can need to get through the door and also what they now need to pay. And that will depend differently on what your setup's like. So your value can be anything from how much your mocktails are going to cost to your cocktails. What's your upgrades? How are you going to increase that? So you've got your spa time. So think about how much people should be paying per hour to come and view your spa or to be in your spa. So we sort of look at that because we're sort of got a lot of facilities. So break down how many facilities and think what I would pay to go in. So your food and beverage, now this depends whether you're serving burger and chips sandwiches or whether you're doing a full on dining experience. Your treatments, are you doing 30 minute treatments sort of back to back or are you trying to go for more the larger market? But value your treatments on the products you use, what it costs you to do your products, uh, do your treatment, but also the experience that the guest is getting. It's the little extras that people feel like it added to the experience, whether it be a pin to walk at the front or a little hand and arm massage, you know, everything can add that value to your treatment that's better than somewhere else. Different experiences. We have a lot of what we call spa experiences that are medical grade that were paid for. So people pay extra to go into these, but then these are really great things to introduce into a package to make sure that people feel like they're getting more for their money. So then you go on to your product sales. So, you know, what do they retail at? Can you get little mini trial bags to bolt onto a facial so you can sort of tie them all in? So now we go to my biggest passion is that everybody who walks through my doors every single time will have paid the same for the same package. I won't bend on that. I've had many an argument with Groupon reps, with 
discount stores with virgin experience sort of going, uh, if you give us a discount, I'm like, no, every single person that walks through my doors, no matter where they booked from, you know, if they booked on booking.com, anywhere, they will have paid the same as the same person on that same package. I've never bent on that. And it took some getting used to because it's very, very tempting when you're quiet to go with one of these discount sites. And all I can say is that you will get them, but they'll never return and they'll definitely never pay full. I have people who used to say to me, oh, I'm just waiting for you to be on Groupon. I'm like, yeah, it's never going to happen because it cheapens the value of what your business is about. And then people will then look for the discounts, whereas if the discounts are never there, then they sort of think, well, actually, I really want to be there. And it's all about positioning yourself and giving people a great experience that they're willing to pay for. If you only sell one of your services, you should always get 100% of its value. So if it's a standalone treatment, they pay full price. There's never any discounts on those. If they come for just spa access, they pay full price. That way, people remember what the value of that item is. So when you do put a package together, then it feels like they're getting more for the money. But if you're only selling one treatment, one, you know, lunch, everything should have a high value of what it's worth. So we have mainly our core packages. So these are the ones that I would never ever change the value of apart from when it's price increase, because that is my benchmark of what people pay to come into each area. So we have a full day spa. So that's always at 99 in the week, 110 at the weekend. So we keep that as that is the price for a full day spa. So that just includes a two course lunch. It's packaged and that's what you have to pay. Our morning spa is £80 and £85 at the weekend. So it's not such a big jump to jump to the full day. So you're always trying to encourage people to just go to that next level because we find when people are on a full day, they've got more time to relax and they actually then buy the little extras. Um, but then we have our afternoon spa, which is just spa access, no lunch. And that one gives us our spa value, which is of £60. So really we work out our spa time is at £20 an hour unless you buy more and then you get a little bit more reduced. So now how do you build your package? What do you look for? How would you actually go about building a spa package and knowing what value to put on everything? I always think the best way to do it is look at what you've got to offer. So you've got your spa access or it might be your treatment menu. That might be what you're looking at doing. Look at the high value treatments that actually give you the most money back. And the low value treatments are the little ones that you can add in that you can almost hide in a package. Your additional experiences, will that enhance people if you give it to enough people, it'll enhance their experience. Your product houses, can you get little miniatures? Can you get little sample bags? Anything that can just give that little bit more to the client without costing you a lot. Drinks, ideal if they're going into our Savia Med. We have a package that includes a mocktail. So there's always the chance to upgrade to a cocktail, but they get the mocktail in, in the package, which gives them a little bit of a discount on their full day if they were to book it separately. And that way, they feel like they're getting an experience and it's a great photo opportunity. We have so many people with their nice drinks. You've got your food to build in there. And then if you've got, luckily for us, we've got a hotel that we can then bolt onto. So we've got loads and things that we can build on packages to give a lot of variety to the people who, you know, have never been to us before. We always start at the beginning. So it's sort of like, what are you looking for? Do you want the morning? And then it's like, oh, if you're morning, what time do you need to leave by? If they don't need to leave by three, well, actually it's not that much more to upgrade to a full day. So then you can start building on your packages and then selling them up in increments. So then you can add your value to your package. So you've got your, your spa day. So then we have what's called our mini meetup, which is our biggest seller by far for the people who are local because they can come, they get the five hour spa, they get the lunch and the 30 minute treatment. So for those people, we've priced it, you know, which works 105, it seems to be a really good price point for people. So then if they wanted to upgrade to an hour's treatment, it's 150. So it's quite a big jump, but the, you know, if they want an hour's treatment, 
we then have our spa day special where they get the extra time. So the time is what they get paid 10 pound more and they get to stay for the full day. So for somebody that values treatments and wasn't really bothered whether they stay five hours or, or an hour, it's a really easy sell to go from the mini meetup to the one hour treatment. Oh, if you want a one hour treatment, jump to the full day and then they're here for longer, they're more relaxed and you can get more out of them. So then we go, obviously, well, if you wanted to stay for the full day, then you've got, what about stopping over? You know, and we, the bigger that we go to the package next, the bigger the savings are. So it's kind of always trying to make sure that you're giving the customer everything that they want, but sort of always making everything obtainable. So you go from one to the next. Building your packages is all about knowing where your value is, making sure that you get creative with them. And then sell a bit of a dream. You know, Instagram is humongous at the minute. I just find it such a great platform because images speak far better than your wording ever can. And it's down to your reception team, if you've got one, to do that selling and the training of the reception team on how to get to the next level with everybody. So everybody gets the experience they paid for in a really great way. Um, and for us, you know, the more you book, the better the discounts and the, you know, the bigger saving you get because you've added on lots more value to your treatment. So we've got relax and rejuvenate. So you've got the dinner, the bedtime, the night, late checkout. That's an easy one to just get in there. So that's one of your savings. Normally it would be 30 pound per person. So it's quite easy to just add the packages together and build them. So that's my presentation. I know it's quite spot short and sweet, but we've been really busy trying to get back to normal in this new COVID world. Um, I hope you've really enjoyed it. Um, I'm really sorry about the mess. It's been brilliant. No, honestly. Um, I was just going to say, maybe if you unshare your screen for a second, I've got a couple of questions that I think people who are watching might have, if you're okay to just answer a couple. Um, just so people can see you full screen again, if you just um, stop sharing. Brilliant. <laughs> that was amazing. That was so interesting, Lizzie. Um, I've got a couple of questions for you, which, like I said, I think maybe people would be asking. And um, the first one is obviously COVID has changed a lot of things. Um, are you, how are you adding in the extra costs for COVID? Because obviously there's the PPE, there's the extra cleaning time, things like that. Have you done a price increase or have you factored these costs into your packages now? And if so, how have you worked that out? Yeah, well, we did the price increase just before COVID, obviously, because we were going to do a price increase in April anyway. Um, what we've done, obviously, we still can't open our steam rooms and sauna, so it's a bit of a balancing act at the minute of being able to still keep the revenue, but I am passionate. We never give any money back. Mm. So anybody that had a reservation, we've had to honor, which has hit our bottom line quite significantly, but the new prices are covering our costs, for, you know, for the PPE, for the therapist. Mm. You know, we were quite lucky in the way that we operated the spa before COVID, because we were always exclusive. We never wanted to overfill our spa. Yeah. So it was built to hold about 60 people. So we had used to let 35 in at a time. So any one session was 35 people. Now we've dropped it down to 30, which still luckily makes us money. Mm. It does mean that the guests are getting the exclusivity that they've always had from us. And as for the cleaning, we always did it. Mm. We always did everything. So it wasn't when the government said, oh, you know, you need to clean. I think on the government website, I remember reading that you need to clean like your computer screen twice a day, or you need to clean at least twice a day. And I'm like, we were doing it four before COVID even existed. <laughs> yeah, you know, because the industry's really strong on um, hygiene and health and safety yeah. anyway. And I think um, that's just the lack of the government really understanding our industry. Um, but have you noticed any kind of knock on from clients in terms of selling packages? Because obviously, like you said, the sauna and the steam rooms can't open at the moment because of restrictions and there's no sign on when that might come off has that had an impact on the type of packages that you've been selling since you've been able to reopen at first it did when we thought it was going to be a short-term thing we yeah. sort of ran every single client and we rang everybody personally rather than just sending giant emails out because we found that that was a lot better way to explain to people we didn't reduce the price mm. 
we just said, look, I'm really sorry, if you don't want to come, we can reschedule you up until the end of September next year is how we've worded it to people. Everybody still wanted to come. Mm. So they had to come knowing that they weren't open. We did do a £10 credit that people could use in the spa when they first got here. So we still kept the full income and they could spend it on drinks or an experience. Mm. That's a really good way of kind of dealing with the situation and actually still giving the customer value, but without you having to lose any of that really essential income. No, because I didn't want to discount everything. Yeah. Now it's looking um, like a lot more longer term. I just can't see it happening, in, especially with everything that's happening. From the 1st of October, everybody now knows that, that it's the norm that they're not open. Mm. We've still got the, the rooms open, as in they can go in and use them and they're sanitised, they're just not switched on. Yeah. So, now selling them as relaxation spaces. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's yeah, it's really tricky. But as for the cost, apart from the masks and the visors, there's not been that much of a huge cost increase because, as I say, we were cleaning to that standard anyway. We bought. We're get, getting through sanitizer like there's no tomorrow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think everybody is. Yeah. I mean, for you, you know, what would you say is the one cost? that you think a lot of spas fail to really take into account when they're creating these packages? Well, from, from building the spa and not realising what a big animal they are to feed is our electricity. Mm. The biggest cost, it was the one that hit me the most. Yeah. You know, on top of everything else, I kind of knew vaguely where it was, but yeah, the electricity and gas to heat the pool kind of, they're a lot, lot that's mm. wages. Always got to keep an eye on my wages. Yeah. Um, but I'm very lucky. I've got a, a, I can't say how great the team are, you know, mm. especially during furlough and everything like that. They've all come back bouncing and just really getting at it. And they know how much we've been struggling. So mm. they are more passionate about just upselling, making sure that they've got the product knowledge. And a lot of them did a lot of their own product knowledge while they were on furlough. So they've come back knowing the products better than they ever did because they've had time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's the silver lining, isn't it? I yeah. mean, I guess as well, because I'm um, just looking at the packages that you guys have got, they're very succinct and very concise and they're clearly aimed at certain types of client groups. I mean, can a spa have too many packages? And what do you think is kind of the ideal number to kind of strive to have? Well, I think you can mix and match. I think you can always have quite a lot of packages in the background that you can switch in and switch out. We probably have a core six. Okay, yeah. And look at, and then each package then has upgrade options. Mm. So then you can sort of, like the spa day special, have a 90 minute treatment upgrade or, a, you know, 120. So then people can have those choices. But if you get too many, people just get bored of the choice. And they're like, oh, I don't know what to choose. Yeah. So we try and have only six at a time on show mm. a whole load of others that are kind of in the background that we can then bring out if it's like school day social so we can yeah have a, uh, come from 9 30 till 3 you mm. know that'll be a very limited package yeah specific amount of time and then we have our tinies and tweeny events <laughs> <laughs> and do you find that um you know how often do you update your packages in terms of what's in them and also price increase wise like is there like a good standard benchmark for doing those two things yeah well when we first opened we didn't change our prices for two years um mm. but that was probably too long i think we were a bit fearful because we were still quite a new business yeah trying to get known um but now it's every year we sort of have a bit of, bit of a reshape but our core packages don't disappear mm. like morning spa we might hide for a bit because sometimes it's nice to get the full days in yeah then we always, we'll bring it back because it's such a popular package for the school run yeah um, for a morning to come and relax and go so and the morning spa if you then can sell the afternoon you're actually in a better position sometimes yeah and something really interesting that you said in this webinar was um that there sometimes is a temptation to discount um, especially when you're trying to get numbers in, and I guess with the situation that we're living in at the moment. And you said that um, obviously you don't use the discount sites like Groupon and stuff like that. So how do you kind of market your packages then and make clients aware of them? Like what kind of other avenues do you use for that? We use a lot of the social media. We use a lot of press. You know, we do invite a lot of press in. Mm. Um, we do use the occasional influencer, but we are quite particular of who we use. Mm. But we just keep 
we find that the, because our message is so consistent that people start to know it. Um, yeah. We had, we had a, somebody in the other day who was a, a celebrity and I was like, how did you hear about it? She went, of course. I was like, oh, it works. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> It does if it's done in the right way. And it's all about keeping it very consistent. So everything we do is on a, the same message because if you try and put too much out there, people don't know what you're about, what you've got to offer. Yeah. A lot to offer. So we could go crazy with packages. You know, we yeah. Hundreds, but we find it's like the treatment menu. The way I designed it in the beginning was it's all built on time. Mm. All right, your little list essential what I call essential treatments but it's like if you book a time band you can choose between all these different treatments so the therapists don't have to go through that awkward well you can have that but it's 10 pound more or it's five pound more it's yeah. everything that bracket is that price mm. and they can add on like a full treatment or you know upgrade in lots of other ways because I find that the customer then knows what they're, they're paying for and they, they see the value as the therapist time versus the value of the treatment yeah and I, I guess as well like even before COVID and I guess probably a little bit now that we are still living through the COVID pandemic is that there's always that slight worry that people like I guess making assumptions about how much money clients have to spend um, but I think what you've said about knowing your value and sticking to it is a real reflection because we have heard from other people before who sometimes have used those discount sites is that they might get those people in once but obviously they don't always necessarily turn into a regular spa goer with that spa i mean is there any advice you have for any spas at the moment that are feeling the strain a bit with covid but kind of want to stay true to their value stay true to your value honestly it might hurt for a while you know you've got to hold your nerve sometimes when it's when you are a little bit quiet we had some times where I was tempted I'm not going to lie there's been loads of times in my career that I've like thought mm. but then if you hold it it does come back because people do want to experience a really nice thing and I always one of the things I said to the owner of the hotel I in fact he says oh well you know you want your wealthy client I went no you don't want the wealthy clients. I says, they're lovely and they're great to have. I says, but it's people like I was when I was living in a three bedroom semi with a little child. I'd pay anything to be treated like a millionaire for the day. <laughs> because that's yeah. what I wanted this place to be. It's like when you come here, you are treated like you are a millionaire for that day. And I find my best clients, when I was working in the hotel, I used to have a little tiny treatment room. And that's where I built this from. Mm -hmm. and my best clients were some of the housekeeping staff who literally like just used to come and go, oh, that, that's hurting. And they'd, they'd then be like, oh, I'll have a face. And I was like, oh. it, was, it was what's important to them. And quite often, if you've got a gorgeous house with a great garden and perhaps a swimming pool, you don't value a spa the same as somebody that works exactly. like 60 hours a week and is in a really stressful job. They're the people who actually want to treat themselves and they want, they want what it's worth. Mm. get the experience they won't they'll come back time and time again and we have so many regular clients that come yeah. once a month but we don't care whether you come once a month or once a year for your anniversary or your birthday we try and keep it as consistent but they always know that they're never going to be you know nobody else has got a cheaper deal yeah the key is never to make an assumption is it about what somebody could pay because the client knows what they're willing to pay and they will let you know and um it's that kind of regulars who come in, that loyalty that's really going to help a lot of spas through this quite um, challenging time at the moment. It's also, it's an opportunity at the moment. It really is because people aren't going abroad. So people are, have got their holiday money that they thought they were going to spend abroad to go to spend it on a day and they just want a day off from it all. And yeah. we've, we've tried to make sure that we're as COVID as secure as we can, but also give mm. people a bit of a break from it. Yeah. We've got staggered start and arrival times, you know, and departure times. So that's the bit where we think the changing rooms, they need to be in a bubble in the changing rooms, mm. you know. And then once they're in the spa, we just ask them to social distance themselves. And they do. Mm. We've once had to go up to somebody and go, well, you're getting a bit close now, sorry. Um, because yeah. we, just, we sort of sit them down and we communicate, go, look, you know, this is the situation we're in. You know, we're all a bit fed up of it. You know, you sanitize, we take a temperature. Then you go in, in socially distanced bubbles into the changing rooms, you get into the spa, then you can relax. Yeah. Enjoy your day. Yeah. Rest and like, 
like you said as well there's so many clients who would have had an international holiday and they haven't been able to so obviously people are looking for staycations and so this could be an opportunity for spas to provide an experience for people during this time when they don't feel comfortable flying yeah and we're, we're up on staycations you know oh our really wow. are 100 percent up from last year wow so maybe that's kind of the focus is just really selling your place as somewhere where you can have an amazing break in the uk um away from all this madness <laughs> kind of going on in the world at the moment um but lizzie they were all the questions i had for you based on your webinar and i really hope that that's answered some of the viewers questions but anybody who is watching if you do have a question that i haven't answered asked Lizzie or Lizzie hasn't answered please do type it in the comment box and I will do my best to kind of run them by her and get you some answers back but Lizzie I just want to say a massive thank you for doing this it's been a really brilliant interesting webinar I think there's loads of helpful advice and tips in there for people um, and we just really appreciate you taking the time out and um, to share your knowledge with us Oh, thank you. I'm so sorry my screen didn't share at the beginning. Oh, do, you know what? do not worry. We've had everything going on these webinars. You know, it's technology. We've got used to it. It's a, you know, I would not worry about it. I just did not want to break you up in your flow at the start because it was so interesting, the stuff you were saying. I was just trying to wait for a natural break um, to let you know. But thank you so much, Lizzie. And I'm sure we'll kind of work with you again soon. Um, but for now, I'll see you later. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.